I'm Anne from Game Like a Mother. Today I'm going to show you how to play SOS Dino. It's ages 7 and up, 1 to 4 players, and it takes 25 minutes. Let me show you how to play. The goal of the game is to work together as a team to get all four of these dinos and all six of these eggs to the mountains to safety before any of them um, have the hot lava get to them. For game setup, you uh, put the dinos on their spots in the center by the little watering hole. Uh, you put the eggs on each of the nest spots. Uh, you put the mountains, you assemble the mountains and put them on the side of the board. Yes, they hang off a little bit. Uh, and then you put the corresponding color tile on top of the hot lava, on top of the volcano spot. Uh, and that goes underneath the, the volcano that is the same color as the little flowers around the bottom of the spot. Make sure you have the lava flowing out on the spot where you can see some lava pooling at the bottom of the volcano. Then you have uh, pointy rocks, which you can see on the board, but uh, you put it's a barrier which the dinos can't go across. And so you put the pointy rock pieces on them. And there's a choice to play with thorny bushes, uh, which go on these little flower spots. And for your first time through, I would recommend not using them, that they can just go across the spots like normal. So if your first time through, uh, you wouldn't play with them and you'd put them off to the side. And then finally, you take the rest of the tiles, mix them up and stick them in the big black bag. Gameplay. The person with the shortest arms, or just the youngest, gets to go first, and all you do on a turn is you draw a tile, you place a tile, and you perform the action. So you always have to place, if you draw a lava tile, it goes by the lava that has the same color flowers around it. So this one is the red one. And you work as a team and decide which way you have to place it where the lava's flowing out, and you pick the way you want it to be oriented. So we'll say they go ahead and place it like this. Uh, when there's one little dinosaur footprint at the bottom, it means you can move one dinosaur one spot. And if you look at the back, it shows which dinosaur you cannot move. It's the red dinosaur uh, volcano, so he cannot move. So you can pick any other one of these. You don't just pick one dinosaur to move independently of everybody else. You're working as a team to move all these dinosaurs. Anybody can move any of these dinosaurs. So we'll say they go ahead and decide to move this dinosaur one spot um, to go and move to this nest and uh, pick up that egg. So then it's the next player's turn. You move clockwise and the next player might get a tile like this. So it goes with the pink volcano and it has another volcano tile at the bottom. So for this one, uh, none of the dinosaurs, there's no footprint, nobody gets to move, and the same player then has to draw another tile. And so they would go ahead and draw without looking inside of the bag, and there's only one option of where to place this tile, and uh, for this, there are two footprints on it. So two different dinosaurs get to move, one spot each. There are different colors of footprints, so you can't pick the same one and have it move twice. It has to be two different dinosaurs. And again, it's the pink uh, flowers on it, so you can't move the pink dinosaur, but you can move any of the other ones one spot each. So we'll go ahead and move this one one and this one one. So what happens when you cross through or land on a spot with an egg on it? The egg just moves instantly to a mountain. You don't have to carry it along with you. The egg is instantly saved, put it on whatever mountain, it doesn't matter, and continue to play. So the deal is you keep on doing this, take turns, the next person goes, and you always have to place it on the one spot at the end of the volcano. Um, oh, he's gonna turn it like this so it doesn't go this way and block off the egg. Um, and again, purple can't move here. Anybody else can move one spot. Uh, we'll pick red again. And you do this, but eventually you can get it so that your volcano, either it, it ends up where it goes off the board and there isn't anywhere else for the, um, the lava to flow because you can't keep on placing pieces off the end of the board, uh, or 
you get one of the pieces that's a dead end piece for your volcano, which I'm not getting right now. Let's see. Oh, here we go. So if this piece was placed here and then on the next turn for that player, there, if you look, the lava's not flowing off the edge. It's blocked right here. So the next time that same player draws this, uh, your volcano has blown its top and this is removed. And now uh, it's actually kind of a nice thing for the game because you can choose any of these other directions to play your pieces at that point. You can't place it this way because there's an obstacle there. So that also stops a volcano. Volcanoes stop if they're going off the board, if there's a dead end, or if there's an obstacle in a way. That's, that's when a path is blocked and you can't place anymore. So we would go ahead and place it here if that happened. And that can happen to all of the volcanoes. Uh, if your guy is moving along and if he had been here uh, and the volcano blew its top and you, you would want to place this here so that he could still hopefully get around. Uh, if you place it on, if you're forced to place it on the spot where uh, a dinosaur is, the dinosaur has been eliminated and is out of the game. You can still finish the game and get a certain amount of points, but to really win, you need to save every all of the dinosaurs and all of the eggs. Same thing with an egg. If it ended up going across a spot with an egg, the egg is just out of the game, and you can still finish the game and uh, get a certain amount of points, but to really win, you need to be able to save everything on the board. And then the other thing that you can draw from the pile here is you can draw meteorites and meteorites are both good and bad. When you draw a meteorite, you look for the little symbol on the meteorite and place it on that spot. If a dinosaur is on that spot, they have been eliminated. They've been squashed by a meteorite, but the meteorites allow you, if there's no dinosaur there, you're fine. Uh, they allow you to pick one dinosaur and move them two spots uh, because there are two footprints on there. And so if this is played, you can go ahead and move somebody two spots. And there are quite a few meteor, meteorite spots throughout the board to use. Here's what the end of a game might look like. Uh, as you can see, these two dinosaurs are sharing this mountain because this one got blocked off by the lava, which is totally okay. You can have more than one dinosaur on the same mountain if that's what works. And uh, this dino just needs to get the egg right in front of him and end up on this mountain in order to win. So you draw a tile and this one, at this point of the game, there's only one dinosaur left to move. So even though this shows two different dinosaurs moving one spot, this dinosaur is the only one available, so it just gets to move one spot. Then he draws another tile, and uh, you can't do diagonal moves. So he's going to go ahead and move here, and he still needs to have one more move to get up on to the mountain. Here we have um, a meteorite, but if you've covered up the meteorite spot with lava, it's right here, then you don't get to use it. And so this is just discarded and he doesn't get to use the moves to make it up there. But then finally he draws this last bit of lava and makes it up here. And the game ends instantly when uh, the last dinosaur makes it up there and at this point, you can uh, tally points, uh, but basically if everybody made it, then you've won the game. The game ends either when the last dino climbs the mountain, the last dino is eliminated by a meteorite or lava, or there are no more tiles to draw in bag. At that point, you just score and you still, there's a chart to show you how well you did um, and base and depending on um, what you drew and the obstacles you chose to have on the game, uh, you can be very proud of yourself even if you didn't get everything. And basically all you do is you score two points per dino that made it to the mountain and one point per egg you saved and that is on the mountain. So that's how to play SOS Dino. It's a great little cooperative game for the dinosaur fan in your life. So check it out. Thanks and see you next time from Game Like a Mother.